Hello and Happy New Year, if it is still socially acceptable to say Happy New Year uh, when you're already way over halfway through January. Um, but no, I'm going to say it anyway. Happy New Year. I hope you had a good one. Today I wanted to share all of the things that I loved from 2019, um, mainly just so I can move on from it onto um, like this year that we're in, this decade that we're in. Um, but today I'm feeling reflective, so uh, here are all the things that I loved in 2019. So these are all the things that were new to me in 2019 and that I really loved and highly rate. So we'll start with beauty, as always. And one of the best things, like full stop, that I discovered in 2019 is the Clinique Moisture Surge moisturiser thing, um, which I never really know the proper name of. It's like a moisture jelly type thing. Uh, it's wonderful. This is like one of the most moisturising moisturisers that I've ever used. I never thought I liked gel, but this is like such a wonderful texture. It genuinely like absorbs really well and just leaves your skin feeling like nice and plump and hydrated. Um, and it's just like a really nice moisturiser. I really love this. I can't see myself straying from this anytime soon. I'm sure I will eventually, but for the time being, this very much has my heart and my soul and my everything. And then some other skincare that I really loved um, was the skincare that I bought from the Inky List. I've only tried three products from them, but all three products I really love. Um, so I also have the rosehip oil. To be honest, that one I would be okay with replacing because it's just like just rosehip oil. I think a lot of brands do that. Um, but I really like the Hyaluronic Acid and Q10 Serum together, like as a pair, these just are really nice on the skin and especially in conjunction with this that I just threw away, um, like the whole thing just feels really nice. Not too like heavy on the skin, like they're very lightweight but they provide enough like moisture um, where I don't feel like my skin is getting dry or anything throughout the day. Um, uh, but they also like don't clog my pores or anything they're just like all three are really nice in combination together um i really like the serum separate but they work so much better as a duo um so i don't think i would use the hyaluronic acid on its own and i don't think i would use the q10 on its own they are better as a pair i've repurchased these like about four times i think so far throughout the year and um i mean they're so cheap that it's really not an issue but i do think i'll try something else and um, certainly when the Q10 runs out, because this runs out really quickly, um, but I think I'll probably try something else from the Inky List because I've been really impressed by this brand and it's super cheap um, and it's really good. So that's great. And then the only other beauty thing that was like new to me this year that I loved was this uh, lipstick from Lipstick Queen and this is their, what do you call, Morning Sunshine lipstick, which, I mean, it doesn't look like yellow now because it has like a pink rim, which is... Um, not the nicest but it's basically a yellow lipstick that like matches your pH and I just I always find these pH type things really flattering because obviously they match exactly you <laughs> if that makes sense um, so I just find this sort of shade really brightening on me so I've really liked it for like pepping up my face this has kind of become like my go-to um, when I'm just doing like a really simple like everyday type makeup for like kind of a brightening effect. It's really nice. And then I've never really included fashion before, but I do have one fashion favorite and it's this top that I'm wearing now. It's the Share Top from Realization Par. To be honest, I haven't worn it a whole ton because when I bought it, like we were going into winter. So um, it's been a bit too cold generally to wear it, but this is like their most well-designed Piece. Like if you're thinking of buying anything from Realization Par and you like everything and you don't know how to narrow it down, I really recommend this one, especially because it's like currently the cheapest thing on their website, which like is still quite expensive. But it's just like a really pretty cropped ruffle top. So it has like frills on the sleeves, frills down here. It's like a kind of peplum crop style. You can wear it as a jacket. I'm not going to do that right now because then I'll flourish. Um, but what I really love about it is like it's a wrap style um, and it has two buttons. I don't know if you can see so I'm not going to like try and show you but it has two buttons um, on the outside and two buttons on the inside on the opposite side. So you can like have it as tight or as loose like Obviously it's relative to like the buttons and the size that you get, but you can either wear it slightly tighter or slightly looser depending on like what you're going for. And it also has like a little popper button 
on the chest so you can have like a little bit more coverage if that's something that like really bothers you. I just think this is their most well designed piece um, and I have already got it in another colour um, because I got it for Christmas. I also now have the daisy one which I haven't worn yet um, but it's definitely like my favourite design that I've bought from them so far. I just think it's like so well thought through and I really love this colour as well. It Moving on to podcasts. There are three podcasts that I really enjoyed this past year. The first one is The Butterfly Effect by John Ronson and then like Intern and um, The Last Days of August which is kind of a follow-on but not really. It's kind of like an in-depth look at the porn industry and how they were affected by Pornhub, so free pornography on the internet and it's just really fascinating. I just generally really like how John Ronson tells stories um, and like how he approaches people. Like I just think he formats things very well and he has just a voice that I enjoy listening to um, so I am really hoping that there'll be more podcasts from him this year because I think he does really well in the format. He's also like an author so you can read his books as well um, but I really like him in podcast form and it was just a really interesting um, if a little bit weird uh, and maybe not something you want to listen to around your parents type of podcast. The second podcast that I really enjoyed is actually one that I've not had a chance to speak about yet on this channel because I failed at doing my monthly reviews for like the last few months um, but the second podcast is Dolly Parton's America. This is by the same people who do Radio Lab. so if that's a podcast that you really enjoy then maybe check out Dolly Parton's America because it's like has a similar sort of format. I really enjoy Radio Lab. definitely one that I recommend if you've never listened to it before or if you're getting into podcasts it's a really good like starter one um, but Dolly Parton's America it's all about Dolly Parton as the name would suggest and how she's kind of shaped America um, and like her influence over the years. I'll be honest didn't really know an awful lot about Dolly Parton going into this like obviously I knew who she was and I know some of her songs but now I feel like I'm a hardcore fan like I just want to listen to Dolly Parton 24 7 I think she's incredible and this series like really made me fall in love with her and just like I think she's great it's a really good podcast as well like outside of just being interesting about her um, but it's not just solely about her it does cover like bigger topics topics that are maybe bigger than she is but it's centered around Dolly Parton. It's really interesting and a really like well-conceived podcast as I would expect from the makers of Radiolab. Um, I really recommend it even if you have no interest in Dolly Parton or country music. Honestly I think your mind could be changed when you listen to this one. And then my favorite podcast of the year um, is a true crime podcast. Just one of the best true crime podcasts I've ever listened to and that's Bear Brook. So this podcast is actually like very much about the victims which I really appreciated um, even though the victims um, at the start of the podcast they don't know who they are. They These are um, unidentified um, victims of murder. There's four of them but by the end you do discover who they are and like it's kind of putting their names back to them and giving them back their lives and I just think it's really well done, really well paced um, and so interesting like it goes into the technology of solving crimes like it's not a stereotypical whodunit, um, it's kind of just like unweaving this great mystery of who these, who these four victims are um, and not necessarily like what happened to them or why, it's finding out who they are. I think even if you don't like true crime um, there's enough kind of like science in there that it could interest you because it as I say it's like about new technologies they're using to solve crimes um, and that in and of itself is very fascinating. Moving on to the books that I loved last year. There's only two books that I rated five star for the whole year because I'm stingy with my star ratings um, but the first one is Crow by Ted Hughes. This is a poetry collection which is all about grief really. Like it is very raw and just exactly how grief is. Like on almost every single page it just slaps you. Um, I've never connected with a poetry collection in the way that I've connected with this one. I just think it's incredible and so very meaningful and there's so much that I tabbed um, in this. I understand why he was a poet laureate, um, not that he needed me to but like I get it, this is great. It's a shame he's you know Ted Hughes but an incredible collection, 
really really recommend it um, if you are into poetry in any way shape or form this is great and then my favorite book of the year and one of my favorite books of all time now is if beale street could talk by james baldwin it's the story of a young black couple and what happens when um one of them is imprisoned for a rape that he did not commit and whilst they're also expecting a baby outside of wedlock how they deal with the family how they deal with this incarceration it's just so beautifully written and so powerful like james baldwin is just was just a master of words um he's quickly i think becoming one of my favorite authors it just like a really really incredible piece of literature and i know it will stay with me for a really long time and i can't wait to reread it like it just so incredibly beautiful and then for film there were so many that I really loved last year, um, but the sort of standouts for me were The Breadwinner, which is an animated film um, set in Afghanistan, and it's about a young girl um, who's just trying to help her family um, when her father gets imprisoned again wrongfully. It is quite a harrowing film, I expected it to be a lot lighter than it was, but it's so incredibly beautiful and moving, I really obviously highly recommend it as with everything in this video. I also really loved The Favourite. I kind of feel like who didn't? I loved how weird and quirky it was and like the performance in it were just incredible. Like Olivia Coleman is the queen. I mean she's literally playing her now but she's just, isn't she incredible? Like she's such a national treasure now. I love her so much and um, just a very interesting and fun take on a historical film like I've never quite seen a film like it and I think that's always what I love about film is if it does something that surprises me so the favorite was definitely a favorite and then the next film like really not for everybody but if it is even vaguely of interest to you like please try it it's just so beautiful and that's Ad Eternity's Gate um, which is about Vincent van Gogh it's kind of like a film that Vincent van Gogh would make um, that's kind of the best way I can think to describe it. It's like so vibrant and full of colour, not a lot happens, it's a little bit weird. Um, it's a really wonderful film, I know I've pronounced its name wrong, um, I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. Um, I'm still annoyed that Willem Dafoe didn't win the Oscar for that, even though I knew he wasn't going to, um, but that was like honestly one of the best performances I've ever seen in film. Like the film would not be the same without him, he was incredible in it truly believed that he was the infamous painter. And then another film that I really loved that I like raved about to my mum and she didn't love it as much as me so I don't know whether you you would like it as much um, but it's First Reformed with Ethan Hawke. I just was literally on the edge of my seat during that film. It's a very quiet film um, and it steadily builds up to its ending. It's like it's by the same guy who did Taxi Driver so if you don't like Taxi Driver you won't like this. Um, they're not exactly the same but they have similar themes and ideas I think. Again very annoyed that they didn't win the Oscar for Best Screenplay because they definitely deserved it. It was so well written and conceived. And then finally the film that broke me. I feel weird calling it a favourite but it's definitely the film that had like the the biggest impact on me this year um, and I don't necessarily know that I would recommend it because I genuinely felt like I grieved because of this film which is really weird I've never had that experience with a film before but it's kind of because of that that I'm including it here now um, because I've never had that experience before and that is Dear Zachary a letter to a son about his father I don't even know if I could explain it without tearing up um, but it's basically a film that a man made um, that he kind of dedicates to his best friend who was murdered um, and he creates it for the son of his murdered friend um, so that he will grow up and know who his father was and will grow up with him even if like he's not in his life. Um, it's also like about the legal battle that this child's grandparents had um, in trying to gain custody of him. It's so personal that you can't help but be sucked into their lives and um, it's so affecting and genuinely so devastating. Like if you do watch it just know that it's it is gonna break your heart. There's like 
just go in prepared <laughs> that's all like like I'm genuinely tearing up now it's so it's so sad so sad and those are sort of all of the things that I really loved last year I also just want to leave a link to a um, playlist that I have of YouTube videos that were like my favorite YouTube videos of the last year but that's everything what was some stuff that you really loved in 2019 please recommend me stuff because I want to fill 2020 with only things that I truly love and enjoy um, so thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you very soon bye